Hi guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome back to another episode of My Dinosaur Series. Last time on the Dinosaur Series, we talked about how the 8 meter sized Protoceratops was a tough herbivorous ceratops being dinosaur that can get up in a fight against predators like Velociraptor and the theory of it having small quills on its tail. We also talked about how the amazing T-Rex relative Tarbosaurus may have been an ambush predator like most carnivorous dinosaurs, and it could also fight off herbivores similar of its size. And let's not forget about its culture of popularity, where it had both movies of Speckles the Tarbosaurus. Now that we have recapped two ancient dinosaurs from the late Cretaceous period, it's time we talk about two other different species of Spinosauridae. One will include the Suchomimus, and the other will include the Irritator. We will now begin with the episode with the Suchomimus. The name of the dinosaur Suchomimus means crocodile mimic because just like its cousin, Spinosaurus and Baryonyx, Suchomimus had a crocodile shaped mouth used for catching fish out of water like those of today's grizzly bears and black bears. The fossils of Suchomimus have been discovered in the year 1997 in the eastern African Sahara near the Tener Desert of Niger. Bones of its complete skeletons have been partially exposed by the wind. However, the remains of these bones meant shifting 15 metric tons of rock and sand. One of the first part of the dinosaur discovered by Paul Serino was its huge sickle-shaped claws. During the early to mid-Cretaceous period, it was suggested that Suchomimus may have used these claws to catch underwater prey as much as it relies on its crocodile-like mouth containing more than a hundred sharp teeth along its jaws. That's the equivalent to a bottlenose dolphin, and that is more than how many teeth T-Rex had. The size of Suchomimus was about 40 feet in length and 13 feet in height, similar sizing to Tyrannosaurus like T-Rex and Tarbosaurus. Apart from its long claws and sharp crocodile-like teeth, Suchomimus had a hump from its back all the way to the tail. It's not much of a sail that Spinosaurus had, but the spines were used to support a fleshy fin used for display and also to warm up and cool down like those of modern sailfin lizards. According to paleontologist Paul Serino, Suchomimus was considered to be an African species of the European Baryonyx Walkeri, therefore the dinosaur could be named as Baryonyx terranensis. The difference between Baryonyx and Suchomimus is not only the size of them, but that Suchomimus had a shorter neck than Baryonyx. And Baryonyx had no sail or spiny spines like Suchomimus or Spinosaurus. Anyways, now that every fact about Suchomimus has been stated, it's time to talk about another species of the Spinosaurus family, the Irritator. The dinosaur Irritator was a name derived from the word irritation based on the emotions of paleontologists who made the discovery of its skull that has been heavily damaged and altered by the collectors in Brazil of South America 1996. During the time and year of its discovery, another of its species was regarded as Angertorama, known from snout to tip as a potential junior system to the Irritator itself. It was also proposed that Irritator and Angertorama's skull parts might have belonged to the same specimen. This required more overlapping fossil material to finalize whether they were the same dinosaur or not since it's hard to tell which skull is which in that matter. The bones of Irritator became a holotype of its full name, Irritator Challengery, as a homage to the fictional character Professor Challenger from the Arthur Conrad Doyle novels. Irritator lived in the early Cretaceous period of Brazil 110 million years ago, where it specialized in hunting fish and other underwater prey from the river. Measuring up from 20 to 26 feet in length, Irritator was one of the smallest species of Spinosaurus known. Its long stout line with serrated sharp teeth for snapping and eating its prey, Irritator may have even possessed a sail on its back used for metabolic temperature control. Whether the sail was as tall and fin-like as the Spinosaurus, or short and spiny like the Suchomimus we mentioned before. Lengthwise, atop its snout, 
Irritator had a small thin crest on its head, which powerful neck muscles were lightly anchored. The way that Spinosaurids, including Irritator, Baryonyx, Sugumimus, and Spinosaurus catch their prey underwater is based on the position of how far their nostrils are from the tip of the snout, enabling the dinosaurs to breathe while feeding in water or scavenging off other dinos. This kind of technique may be different from how crocodilians can hide in water, but crocodilians, including the prehistoric ones, always have their nostrils in the tip of their snout, and yet they are semi-aquatic reptiles and can still last longer underwater and breathe through it with their mouths closed while swimming. Well guys, that's it for this episode. If you like this episode, please leave a like in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on Ian Fairley's Dinosaur Series, we will talk about two different dinosaur species from the early Jurassic period, from the Prosauropod Ankysaurus to the double-crested Dilophosaurus. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening.